Masking in Luminar. In this video I'm going to show you masking techniques within Luminar and there's nothing new about them but I'm just going to show you different ways and perhaps that you could use them if you don't already use them in that way. Masking in any editing software allows you to add and subtract parts of an image or add whole sections of an image into another image via layers. And these masks are hide all and reveal all. If it's a hide all mask, the mask is black and you must paint in white. And if it's a reveal all mask, the mask is white and you have to paint in black. In Lumina, it's entitled paint and erase, but it's the same principles to do it. As this is a long video, I'm going to dive right in and show you different masking methods. Okay, for this example here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to blend in the same image, but I'm going to emphasise the waterfall. So as you can see, I've got the raw file open. I'm going to go in and add new image layer. For this image layer, it's just a JPEG saved of the same picture. So you can see that there and then there. And that is it. That's the exact same thing. What we're going to do with this, for the blending of this, right? I'm going to turn the image opacity down, but at the same time, I don't have to with this. But I have for this example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the aspect ratio. And I'm going to drag it out. And I'm going to make the waterfall bigger, as you can see, I've got it there. Right, to match this up, I would have to overlay it there and then the waterfall would be slightly bigger there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change how this image is slightly. And what I'm going to do is drag that to around there. So the waterfall is already increased in size. You can see that area there and this is the same area. I'm matching up the dark there to the dark here, but I'm not matching up the lighter area here. So I'm just going to put that where I think it will work best for this image. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to click done. Next thing I'm going to do is turn the image opacity back up. So if I flick this layer on and off, you can see the difference in size with this. And what I'm going to do is blend this part of the waterfall, the same waterfall, into the original image here. And how I'm going to do that is edit mask, take the brush, and using the paint option, I am going to paint in. And you'll see the changes taking place as I do this. Yes, it will change the landscape and how it looks. But it's to give more emphasis to the foreground element. In this case, it's a dreary photo anyway, but in this case, it's given more em emphasis to the foreground elements here. So if I go for that, the one thing that I'm looking for is repetition. If I see repetition, I'll go in and change it. And I can see it here and here, but your eyes aren't drawn to it straight away. But if your eyes were drawn to it, if you press X on your keyboard, you'll notice that that goes up to erase. The square brackets in the keyboard take the brush up and down, or you can go in here and change the brush size. So I'm just going to paint in a tiny bit there, just to take the emphasis away from the repetition. I'll just click once there just to blend. And if I paint in there, you'll see the old waterfall coming back. So I'm going to press X on the keyboard and paint it back out. And I'm using a smaller brush now to do this. I'm looking over my entire image to look for artifacts that would draw you away from it and draw you away straight away instead of looking at the image the repetition or an artifact that stands out draws you away from the entire image so you're looking carefully around this and what I'll do for that I'll leave it at this just now because that shows you that example and what we've done there is we've just brought in a JPEG of the NEF no colour adjustments or anything done. We've then scaled it up and we've blended it in using the brush. 
So if I turn off the mask and then go turn off the layer, you see it there and then there. So the second image for me puts more emphasis on the waterfall and leads you up through. With the first image, it leads you right through as well. But if I wanted more emphasis on the waterfall, and when I was taking this photo, I couldn't really get it because the river was down here and there was a, a drop into the river, so I wouldn't have got that height as well. So that's one way of using the brush to blend in an image. Another use for the masking brush is with this image here, I'll go into this one and I'm going to pull back the colour in the sky. I'm going to pull back the blues and for this what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the saturation back. Then I'm going to pull the luminance right back just to bring out all this detail in the clouds. But from the original image, I'll light the blue in the sea. So... I'm going to get this to just where I want it with the edit. Just to about there. And I'm going to choose the mask and choose the brush. I'm going to use a raise for this. And what I'm going to do, this colour has been applied to the entire image, even over the hills as well. And I wanted the blue of the sea to come back through. So what I'm going to do now is paint that blue back in. So basically I'm erasing through the, what I've just applied to this. In this case, the desaturation of the blue and the luminance of the blue have been drawn back as well. Which, if I use the erase tool, you will see that the colour of the sea comes back through. And I'm using quite a big soft edge brush here to do that because I don't want any hard edges with this. When I go in closer, I'll use the square brackets in the keyboard and take the size down and go in again and then go around this edge here. And just to check to see if I've missed any areas, if you press the mask button there, you'll see that, yep, there's an area there missed, but in there, over there, and round here. But the rest of it has blended really well. After I've done that, I flip this on and off. So there's the original. There's what I've just masked. If I want to get back in to the blue and readjust this, knowing that this will stay the same, I can do so. I can pull the luminance back even further. And I'll just check the mask. And you'll notice that I've missed an area there. So I'm going to take that out. And just there. Check the mask again. That's better. If I wanted to bring back in some of the blue haze up here, what I would do is I would go back up to areas and I'd turn the opacity of it right down. Take the brush a tiny bit larger and just paint some of it back in not all of it, and making sure this time I don't bleed onto the sky. And what that'll do is that'll bring back through some of the blue in the hills. Even down along the edge there, in the rocks over here. So if I click the mask, you see there where it's lightly been painted over. Click the original, there's the original, back into that, I'm going to paint again in here, because it is in the distance, it will have, it's, because it's in the distance, it will have lost the contrast within it, so you'll get that blue atmospheric haze coming over, and that will help add to the image as well. Just check the mask. And you can see that that's coming through even further. I can paint in again, just so that you can see it while I'm painting. Turn the mask off. And that's how you can use any of the tools within the edit mask mode to just apply it to any of the image. The reverse happens if I'd chosen to paint once I'd set it all. If I'd chosen to paint... I would then paint in the sky and the sky would go greyer. So you can do it either via erasing or painting the mask that's there. 
Right, for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to look at gradient masks and I'm going to give you a couple of examples on how you can use them as well. So the first thing I'm going to do for this, for the purpose of this video, is I am going to push the saturation to a garish amount and then I am going to go in and create a new adjustment layer. And it's in this adjustment layer that we're going to add in the gradient. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get down to black and white. We'll just do it very simply for the purposes of this. Convert to black and white. So we now have this black and white adjustment. I'm not going to adjust anything here at all. I'm just going to show you how the gradient mask works. So the first thing, click and drag the amount. Right, so I'm going to pull that to the centre, roughly. And it's at a slight angle just now. But what you can see is where the mask, in this case, a reveal all because it's white, is showing the adjustment layer, which is the black and white layer. The underlying layer, the colour layer, is still showing through, indicated in black. So that's what's showing through. If I drag that in and make it as tight as possible and take it over to there and then rotate it slightly, and bring it back in and I turn off the mask we have a split image so if I go up there we've got a split image we've got one half black and white one half colour so that's you applying the gradient mask with that to move the mask around grab the centre because you will find if you try and grab there now and again it will adjust it will actually flip the mask if you take it over that way so if you've drawn the mask the wrong way, you can flip it by going that way and you'll notice that in here it's changed over again. I'm going to leave it there just now and what I'm going to do is rotate it just so as that I have that effect there. And I'm going to tighten that up so that it's a harder line and more visible for you guys to see. I'm going to turn off the mask. The next thing I can do is I can get back into the mask and create another gradient and from here I'm going to draw in again I'll try and keep this as tight as possible and take it over there to roughly this where it is mirroring the other one that so by using two of the gradient masks we're able to slice out the image I can do it a third time if I wanted to just turn off edit mask, go back in and I can take it out so that I've only got this section here as well. So I'll go in and I'll create another gradient mask and I'll drag it up from there. Pull it into there. I'm going to drag that back down because I quite re like the reflection in here. And then turn it off, turn it back on, another gradient mask which I'll drag in from there. Right, I want these quite tight, so that's the reason I'm bringing them in close. And if I go off of that, so you see we've actually just sectioned out an area within this image. Okay, sticking with this one to show you more uses for the gradient masking. This time I'm going to bring in a new adjustment layer, but using the same principles. And this one I am going to bring in Swirl JPEG. And I'm just going to open that. I'm not going to bother scaling this at the moment in any way at all. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get and edit the mask. And I'm going to use a gradient mask. And I'm going to draw for this instance, if I draw it from the top down, I could blend in the mountains in the background. But scale and everything's a bit much there and you've got these trees. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to reverse that. And I've just done that by dragging down so that I can introduce some of the bottom elements into this. Right, and this one takes a little more time with the edit, but what I'm going to show you is how it can work. So if I take that to about there and then around about there, I can blend in some of the elements of this one here it might not look the perfect picture but it's just to show you what's possible with it so i can blend in some of the elements there i'll leave it at that and then just show you how for example i'd possibly edit some of this out and what i'll do is i'll turn off the mask 
This time, because I've applied most of it with a gradient mask, I can go back in and use the brush, and with the brush, with paint or erase, what I'm looking to do is you notice that that is white, so that means it's revealing. I want to erase it. So I'm going to go over here. I'm actually going to turn the opacity down for this one. I'm going to go for a gentle blend here. So I'm in the erase mode, so you'll see some of this disappearing. And in there as well. So for example, these rocks here, which you know they're not, could be under the water, but you know they're not. And in here as well. But it just lets you see how you can work these together to bring in some of your image. And as you notice, the grass from the underlying layer is coming back through. So all I need to do is go back in and paint it in. And if you do this gently, you'll get a nicer blend. Right, this image here, this image here would not be a finished image. This is just an example to show you how you can use the blending tools together. But starting with the gradient, you can bring in most of it with the gradient and then paint out. Certainly you could just go in and paint, but it's a good idea now and again to see what you want to paint for this. So you can see that that blends away there and that wouldn't work. So if I'd scaled that up, I could possibly take this area right out the screen and then it may fit in better. And what I'll do just for this, I'll turn the opacity down and I'll take it out the screen just to see. So if I scale that out that way, and if I scale this one that way, and then move it across until it disappears out the screen, it's not going to conflict with the trees here. So I'll click done for that. And you'll notice I've missed a bit here, so I'll go back into layer transform, and I'll drag that down the way first, and then I'll click done. So if I turn the opacity of that back up, Although it still doesn't look natural, you can see how it can be used to apply different images together. And then you go in with, again, with your edit mask, your brush, the arrays, and take out the areas. But always, when you're doing this, do it in stages. Don't go in and paint in at 100%, because if you're going to paint in at 100%, you have 100% to work back the way. But if you're painting, in this case, at 53%, I can do this gently, and I can work it until I get to a point that I'm happy. Hopefully that lets you see how two of the tools can come in together to work together to create another image. With this image here, for example, I am going to show you a gradient mask. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the sun rays. You can see that I've just no more managed to catch the sun rays in this. So that for me, because I haven't managed it totally, it's kind of spoiled the image for me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the sun rays that I can see here. So what I'm going to do play with the amount just to get it to where I want it and I'm quite happy with that. I'm then going to place the sun centre behind the cloud where it should be. Right, I'm not keen on these sun rays coming down here but for this example I'm just going to leave the ones in up here. So, radio mask and I'm going to draw a radio mask on this and as you can see the radio mask comes in and when it comes in it hides what you've done, so you have to invert it, and you'll see the change happening. So now I have the sun rays at the top coming out from behind the cloud. The more I increase the size of this, the more of them you can see. The penetration of them only starts then. So I'll reset that to zero. The sun rays length, I can take a bit further but I'm quite happy with where it is for this example. So I don't want them coming down below. I only want them coming up above. So what I do now is turn off the mask and then turn the mask back on and use the brush. Any rays, opacity 100. Just paint them out. And just check that there is none showing by clicking the mask button. Some of them you won't see. 
And that there, I am going to leave for the purposes of this because that lets you see how you can use a gradient when applying sun flares to only selected images. You can see the sun flares coming down here. I'll click done. You can see the sun rays coming down here. Anyway, I don't want them to come out forward towards the photographer or the camera. In this case, I only want them to protrude above the clouds. So that's one way of doing that. Okay, for this one, what I'm going to do is I am going to go in and create a new adjustment layer. And for the examples here, what I'm going to do is I am going to go in and change the color of this, just so you can see what's happening and why I'm doing it as well. I'm going to push that up just about there and there, and I'm just going to change the hue. So let's go for that color there. So there's the original, and here's the color we have now. I only want it to affect the bottle. I don't want it to affect down here. So I have an option here. I can go into the brush, radio mask, or gradient set. For me, I'm going to take the radio mask. And I'm going to draw in there. Take it down in size slightly. I'm watching where the feathering is starting. That's the main part of this. And I'm going to invert it. So you see that it's happening and affecting everything within the bottle. And it's beginning to feather out from there and feather out from here. So that gradient is affecting that. It's also affecting the shelf that this was sitting on. So I need to get rid of that because I want it to take back to the original colour of the original image we brought in. So I now go into Edit Mask and I take the brush. And for me, I've got the softness set at 8% for this one and I'm just going to paint away. It's on Erase as you see, so it takes that out. And I'm just going to do that. So I'm quite liberally doing that. I'm quite safe to do that as well. And the reason I'm safe to do that is because the softness is at 8%. So it's nearly a hard edge. Not quite, but it's nearly a hard edge. Next thing I'm going to do is zoom in just a couple of times just to show you this. And I'll make sure it fits on screen. Right, what I can do now is if I click once there and then hold down shift, it draws a straight line. This is on a Mac. I'm unsure if it does it on a PC though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click there with the top edge of the circle, I'll put an arrow indicating, touching the top line of the shelf, and then going over here and doing the same with the top line of the brush, touching the top line of the shelf again. And then I'll zoom out, Command and Zero, and there we have it. There's the original image, there's the new image. And it's just as an example to show you why I do certain things and how you can use certain elements within the masking to create the images. For this, the last thing I would probably do with this image is I would create a new adjustment layer, go straight into Creative, place Sun Center, I'll just drag that slightly, go over there, and you see it's starting to affect the shelf. So if I go about there, I may turn the Sun Radius up, just a bit there, again, mask, this time just straight away into brush, it's already set at 8%, paint this out, and I'll just do this quickly, so because you know what I'm going to do here, click once there, and then once there, and if it hasn't done it perfectly, zoom in as you can see, so I'll try it again, go in there, and I've let go of the keyboard at this point, it's not until I'm about to click when I hold down shift. And then it takes it out. And as you can see, there's still small areas in there. So you can do it again. You can keep doing that until you get it to exactly how you want it. So that's another quick method of using masking and different techniques to get the final effect that you're after. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully you can see the value of learning the techniques of masking for editing your images. There's one method that I have left out and I'll show that in the next video. For example, the image at the beginning, I could have added mountains in the background, but when I have AI sky replacement, that does it for me in seconds. So I wouldn't take the time to go in and mask out and blend out, blend in mountains at the beginning of that. And just to finish that image, that would be a waste of time. But in other cases, you can see where masking has a lot of value in your images. 
And with the new AI technology, you can add items, objects, anything in within seconds. But if you want to create different aspects within your image, you can use the masking and the masking techniques to bring them in. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and if you'd like to check out more videos, please check them out in the channel below. Uh, if you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be absolutely fantastic and really appreciated. Thanks again for watching, stay safe and see you in the next video.